What if we told you that climate change is redrawing the world map and causing a geopolitical scramble in the Arctic? Indeed, the Arctic region, once a remote and icy wilderness, is now at the forefront of global interest. Thanks to climate change, this frigid frontier is rapidly transforming, revealing untapped resources and opening new strategic pathways. As the ice melts away, nations are eyeing the Arctic's vast natural resources, from oil and gas reserves to rare earth minerals. The region's strategic location is also causing a stir, offering potential new shipping routes that could reshape global trade. The Arctic is no longer just a barren wasteland of ice and snow, it's a hotspot for geopolitical tensions, a stage for power plays between nations and a symbol of our changing world. In this video, we will journey through the geopolitical dynamics of the Arctic region, exploring the effects of climate change, the competition for resources, and the strategic interests of Arctic nations. The Arctic, often seen as a remote and desolate region, has a rich history of geopolitical intrigue. The geopolitical history of the Arctic dates back to the 15th century, when European explorers first ventured north in search of new trade routes. As nations began to understand the value of the Arctic, territorial claims started to emerge. In the early 20th century, disputes over sovereignty led to the Svalbard Treaty of 1920, which granted Norway sovereignty over the Svalbard archipelago but allowed other signatory nations' rights to commercial activities. This was one of the earliest examples of Arctic geopolitics, highlighting the balance between territorial claims and shared economic interests. The Cold War era further intensified geopolitical tensions in the Arctic. The region became a strategic military outpost for both the United States and the Soviet Union, with both superpowers recognizing the potential for missile launches and submarine activity in the region. In 1996, the Arctic Council was established as a high-level intergovernmental forum to promote cooperation among Arctic nations. It includes eight member nations, Canada, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Russia, Sweden, and the United States. The Council has facilitated numerous agreements, such as the Alulisat Declaration of 2008, which stated that any overlapping territorial claims in the Arctic should be resolved peacefully according to international law. However, the 21st century has seen a renewed interest in the Arctic due to the effects of climate change. As ice melts, previously inaccessible resources and shipping routes are becoming available. This is leading to increased competition and tension among Arctic and non-Arctic nations alike. As we can see, the Arctic has always been a region of strategic interest, but climate change is rapidly transforming this icy landscape. Scene script. Climate change is not just a theoretical concept, it is a reality that is drastically changing the Arctic. Let's take a moment to think about this. Picture a vast icy expanse seemingly unchanging and eternal. Now imagine that ice melting away, the sea levels rising, and the once impenetrable white wilderness becoming a navigable ocean. This isn't a scene from some dystopian future, it's happening right now in the Arctic. The Arctic is warming at twice the rate of the rest of the world, a phenomenon known as Arctic amplification. As a result, the Arctic ice is melting at an alarming rate. This melting ice is causing sea levels to rise which could have devastating effects on coastal communities worldwide. But it's not just about rising sea levels. The melting ice is also changing the Arctic itself, opening up previously inaccessible areas. Now you might be thinking, okay, so the ice is melting. Big deal. But here's the thing. This isn't just about the environment. It's about geopolitics, too. The melting ice is revealing new shipping routes that could significantly cut travel times between Asia and Europe. The once elusive Northwest Passage, a direct route from the Atlantic to the Pacific through the Canadian Arctic Archipelago, is now increasingly navigable during the summer months. This could revolutionize global trade, but it also raises issues of sovereignty and security. And there's more. Beneath the Arctic ice lies a treasure trove of untapped resources. We're talking about oil, gas, minerals and more. As the ice melts, these resources are becoming more accessible, sparking a rush among Arctic nations and beyond to stake their claims. So you see, climate change is not just about polar bears and melting ice caps, it's about power, resources and strategic interests. It's about who controls the Arctic and its wealth. It's about the potential for conflict in a region where the rules of the game are rapidly changing. Climate change is reshaping the Arctic and with it, the geopolitical dynamics of the region. As the ice melts, a new competition is heating up in the Arctic, the race for resources. The Arctic, once a remote and inaccessible ice mass is now emerging as a potential treasure trove. 
Beneath its ice and permafrost lie vast quantities of untapped resources. These include oil, natural gas, and a wealth of minerals. Some estimates even suggest that the Arctic holds up to a quarter of the world's yet undiscovered oil and gas reserves. A literal gold mine, if you will. But it's not just about oil and gas. The Arctic also contains significant deposits of rare earth elements, metals crucial to modern technologies like smartphones, electric cars, and military equipment. However, accessing and extracting these resources is no small feat. The Arctic's harsh and unpredictable weather conditions, coupled with its remote location and lack of infrastructure, make resource extraction a challenging and costly endeavor. But as global demand for resources grows, and as technology advances, the Arctic's treasure chest becomes increasingly attractive to nations and corporations alike. The competition for these resources is intensifying, and it's not just the Arctic nations that are in the race. Countries from around the world are showing interest in the Arctic's potential riches. This is leading to a complex and sometimes tense geopolitical landscape, as nations jostle for influence and control in the region. But let's not forget the elephant in the room, or rather, the polar bear on the ice floe. The extraction of Arctic resources presents significant environmental challenges. There's the risk of oil spills, which would be incredibly difficult to clean up in the Arctic's harsh conditions. There's also the fact that the extraction and use of these resources, particularly fossil fuels, could further exacerbate climate change. Moreover, the rights and interests of the Arctic's indigenous peoples who have lived in and cared for these lands for thousands of years must also be considered. They too are stakeholders in this race for resources, and their voices and rights cannot be overlooked. The race for Arctic resources is on, and it's a race with high stakes for the environment and international relations. But resources aren't the only thing at stake in the Arctic, there are also strategic interests to consider. The Arctic, with its vast icy landscapes and remote location, may seem an unlikely focal point for geopolitics. Yet, its strategic significance is immense, and the interests of Arctic nations extend far beyond the allure of untapped resources. Firstly, let's talk about military advantages. The Arctic, with its proximity to several major powers, offers a vantage point that is hard to ignore. Think about it. The Arctic is essentially a direct route over the top of the world, connecting east with west. This makes it a potential hotspot for military activities, including surveillance, missile defense, and submarine warfare. In fact, during the Cold War, the Arctic was a key theater for submarine patrols by both the United States and the Soviet Union. Today, as the ice melts and access improves, the strategic importance of the Arctic as a military zone is only likely to increase. Furthermore, control over shipping routes is another key interest. As the ice retreats, new shipping lanes are opening up, most notably the Northern Sea Route along Russia's Arctic coast and the Northwest Passage through the Canadian Arctic Archipelago. These routes not only shorten the distance between Asia, Europe and North America, but also sidestep traditional choke points like the Suez Canal or the Strait of Malacca. For countries like Russia and Canada, asserting sovereignty over these waters is a matter of national pride and economic potential. Yet these strategic interests are not without their tensions. The Arctic is governed by a complex web of international laws and treaties, including the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. However, territorial claims to the Arctic seabed, which could extend a country's rights to resources and control over shipping routes, are still a contentious issue. Moreover, the increasing military presence and activities in the Arctic are cause for concern. While the Arctic nations have generally maintained a cooperative stance, the potential for conflict cannot be ignored. The Arctic Council, a forum for Arctic nations and indigenous communities, has done much to foster dialogue and cooperation. Still, as the stakes rise, so does the potential for tension and conflict. And let's not forget the potential impacts on the indigenous communities who call the Arctic home. Their lives and livelihoods are intertwined with the Arctic and its future. And while they have a seat at the table through the Arctic Council, their voices are often drowned out by the clamor of geopolitical interests. As the Arctic opens up, it's not just about who gets what resources, it's also about who controls this strategically important region. The melting ice is not just revealing hidden treasures but also a new geopolitical chessboard. The moves made in the Arctic today will shape the geopolitics of tomorrow. So, what does the future hold for Arctic geopolitics? As we peer into the crystal ball of the future a few potential scenarios emerge. These are shaped by factors like continued climate change, 
technological advancements, and the dynamics of international cooperation or conflict. Climate change is the wild card in this deck. As the ice continues to melt at an unprecedented rate, the Arctic is progressively opening up. This newfound accessibility could escalate competition for its rich resources. If we continue on our current trajectory, the race to exploit these untapped reserves of oil, gas, and minerals could intensify, potentially sparking conflicts among nations. On the flip side, technological advancements could either fuel or mitigate these tensions. On one hand, breakthroughs in extraction and shipping technologies might amplify the rush for resources. On the other hand, advancements in renewable energy technologies could reduce the allure of Arctic fossil fuels thereby easing competition. The future of Arctic geopolitics will also hinge on the path of international relations. Will nations opt for cooperation or conflict? If they choose cooperation, we might see the emergence of new governance structures, perhaps even an Arctic treaty, akin to the Antarctic treaty. This could set rules for resource extraction, navigation, and environmental protection, fostering a peaceful and sustainable Arctic. However, if nations choose conflict, the Arctic could become a theater for power struggles. In this less optimistic scenario, we might see militarization and territorial disputes, threatening global security and the fragile Arctic ecosystem. In any case, one thing is certain. Technological, political, and environmental changes are rapidly transforming the Arctic. The region is shedding its old skin of being a remote and isolated wilderness. The Arctic of the future will be